Welcome back to the Swim Swim podcast. My name is Ben Dornan, and we're joined today by 2022 World Short Course Championships medalist, Canadian record holder, and recent qualifier for the 2023 Long Course World Championships, Ingrid Will. Welcome, Ingrid. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Thanks How for having me. How are you doing today? Yeah, pretty definitely. Good. Yeah, no, pretty good. It's a nice sunny day outside. So. like practice this morning swimming weights what was what was up this morning uh saturdays are usually just the two-hour swim workout and then usually followed by um a dry land program it's called 4d i don't know if you've heard of it but usually followed by that but this morning i was lucky it was just stretching just as it's like the first week back and right. then i'll probably do my at home program tonight yeah cool so first week back after trials um which is I guess the biggest meet that that most people in Canada have had this year. Um, and so I guess that it makes sense to kind of start talking about that since it's on everyone's mind um, as it happened last week. So I'm wondering if you had any particular goal times going into the meet, any goal performances going into the meet or kind of what your, what your mindset was like going into 2023 trials. Um, going into it, actually, if I'm honest, I was a little worried. I had the, like we always have some meets here in Alberta that we're lucky enough to attend in Calgary and Edmonton. And I just was not performing at the level that I had been previously. Like I remember going into 2022 trials, I'd at least hit a 59 a few times. And then coming into this, I'd only reached like a minute low. So I was honestly quite worried that I wasn't going to be able to hit a performance that I would be proud of. Um, but I think it also came down to the fact that there was no one really, I feel really bad saying this. There was no one really to race for some of those competitions. So it would just be right. like racing myself. And then compared to trials where I get to race someone and tie up there is Kylie to still like really push me through those races. I think that definitely helped during the race. Um, but yeah, going into trials, I was very anxious. Um, my goal was obviously to make the team properly. Um, not get third like so many people like to comment on <laughs> again <laughs> so no those were just trying to make the team honestly yeah yeah so the 100 backstroke I have obviously been covering Canadian swimming for a while and it seems like at the big meets um at trials at least the 100 back is always on the first day and as yeah. that's kind of one of your your signature events is that something that you're used to now or that you like getting that the kind of big first swim out of out of the way on day one um it goes it's so and so i really i would prefer it was not on the first day um this time it was a completely different first night than i was used to because sometimes like for example in the past when i haven't made the team just having that my main event first day missing out on the team it's kind of hard to mentally get around that for the rest of the competition to just put aside the fact that you didn't reach your goal for that competition and you still have other races and to push through that is sometimes quite often quite difficult um right. so this time it was nice to it was like a sigh of relief to make it on the first night but for those times when you don't make it it's really hard to push through for those other races that are, are still important but knowing that your main shot of making the team is just gone it's hard to feel motivated so right. if I had my way I would love if it was on like day four day five maybe after the tuner back <laughs> yeah so I guess just to kind of recap for for anyone who might have not remembered the results at trials you did win the 100 backstroke in in a new best time you got I think I um I looked up your time I think it was under 59 for the first time is that correct yes, uh 58 yeah. eight to to win the title and yeah, as you said, qualify for the world champs team. So when you touch the wall, like immediate reactions, touch the wall, look at the clock, know that you're in the top two under the FINA A, like what was what was the immediate reaction? Um, if I could give my teammates actually a shout out here, I forgot to do it in the post-race interview. They 
call me out on it. But I touched on my left hand and I actually, my team was standing at the finish line on the left side of the pool. So I actually saw all them first cheering and I was like, nice, I must have done well type of thing. Cause I like need glasses. So it's actually kind of hard to see the board sometimes okay. 50 meters away. So right. I can just close the one eye and then I could see A, that I went the 58-8 cause that's what's always prominent the time not the placing placing is very small beside the time <laughs> and then I saw that I actually won and I was quite quite shocked by that yeah but it was yeah. nice to yeah make the team to make, make the team yeah <laughs> yeah and so another I was just kind of looking at at like your trajectory over the last last few years and I, I think that in 2020 you swam a 59 eight times which was really consistent like at the highest level you kept going 59s but was the 58 mark like in your in your in your vision for for the future or like what, were you looking to strike that 58 mark 100 percent, yeah when i came back to calgary dave and i kind of had to sit down on what my goals were moving forward and then especially after the tokyo 2021 trials um what i could foresee for myself in the future and a 58 low and I'm even hoping maybe I can get down to a 57 high at some point in that future. Um, but a 58 was definitely something that we both felt sure that I could reach and that I could do, that it was definitely within my grasp. And I was kind of hoping for it last summer. Didn't quite get there, but to, still to finally break that 59 second barrier was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. So as we said, the hundred back was the first one. And then I'm wondering, I feel like the narrative that I have understood is that the hundred back is your main event, but I'm wondering, do you consider it to be like number 100 back to be number one and then 250 are kind of secondary events, or do you consider all of the backstrokes to kind of be, be equal? Well, how do you, how, like, um, I'm wondering how you, how you think about it. You no, know. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would put the hundred back and then the 50 back. And then if I had my way, so here's those two. Here's the 200 back <laughs> off screen. Just <laughs> yeah. Just something I like to use um, to help my 100 back, just as like a fitness marker type of thing. It's If you watched my stroke, most people would say I have the stroke of a 200 back stroker, but I just, it's not for me. I don't like it. So. <laughs> and so speaking of the 200, are you, planning on racing it at Worlds this summer? Um, if I'm allowed to, they haven't released, uh, they haven't emailed out what events we're allowed to like confirm or reject yet, but right. if I'm allowed to, might as well, yeah. Right, Love them, so, so just to go over it again, second in the 200 back, 210, 19, and second in the 50 back, 27, 59. Um, and so, yeah, just, I guess, three top two finishes at trials. Made it on the team, at least in one event, a couple of relays. So I guess um, my next question will be about 2023 World Championships, um, which will happen this summer in, in Japan. And you went to 2022 Worlds last year. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe before we talk about what's going to happen in the summer, we could talk about your experience at 2022 Worlds, where... Um, I think it, it was just the 50 back that you swam, right? Is that is that correct? Yeah, I just swam the 50 back and then I swam prelims for the last day on the relay uh, right. for the medley, just because Kylie had done so many events that she needed a session off. <laughs> totally. Um, so yeah, what was that experience like for you, even though you had that disappointment earlier in the year of not making the 100 back, which, which is your focus event, but still getting to travel and get that first uh, not your first international meet by any means, but first world championships, long course. Yeah, it was definitely my first like of that level international long course meet. And so it was actually, I remember so many people talking about how beautiful and amazing that pool was. And I walked in and it was just the training pool. And I was like, I mean, it's really <laughs> nice, but like, I mean, it looks like a normal race pool. And they're like, no, 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 Ingrid. And we walked into the actual racing pool and I was like, oh, dang, okay. All yeah. right, it was a little bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Um, seeing all the cameras and the TVs everywhere, that was a lot. I don't really like to see myself on the screen, so it was a lot more things to hide from. <laughs> Could you actually um, see yourself as you were like racing backstroke? Could you see yourself on the screens? 
Oh, I learned like if I wanted to, I probably could have, but like so many times, like say the scoreboards, even on one end of the pool, I get so distracted if you see your time when you flip. So I've learned from long ago to just try to avoid looking at anything outside of like yourself or the people beside you or occasionally like at that meet if there's one of those cameras that like runs along like that like is attached to the strings I'll right. try to race back a little bit you know try okay. to like catch me but other than right. that I try to avoid most of the screens <laughs> yeah yeah I guess because that camera might be following whoever's in the lead so if you're keeping up with the camera then then you're in the lead <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's a, a fun strategy um cool yeah okay so this this summer then world championships um you don't know what you'll race probably the 100 back and then and then maybe the other backstroke events um and i guess maybe some relays maybe maybe prelims or finals i don't know i feel like kylie maybe in a in a 50 medley relay maybe she'll swim the the butterfly and you'll get to do a backstroke i don't know i, I feel like canada's kind of creative 50? is, is there, there four by 50 medley Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of, of short course worlds where oh, they do that. Okay. I was like so excited for a split second there. Dang. Yeah, no, that probably wouldn't make as much sense long course to have a four by 50 relay now that, now that I think. It's fun. If they want to add it, well, yeah. it'd be fun. <laughs> could be cool. Um, so I'm wondering if you have any, any other specific goals that you've, that you've thought of for world championships now that you've, I guess, made the team, which was a check mark, hit 58, which was a check mark. Um, is there anything else that you, you're kind of thinking of? Of hoping to accomplish in 2023 I try to take things kind of by steps so I think like going into it like you always remain hopeful that you'll do a certain thing but I'll try to like a just make the semi-final b try to make the final if I make that and then just keep trying to progress through each step type of thing going into each meet I don't try to like oh first or nothing type if you're not first you're last I don't try to have that mentality until I'm like five meters from the wall and I'm like no 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 I really want to win type of thing right um, but no I think I'll just take it through the steps I'm just trying to make semis just like set smart goals type of idea right that makes sense um and so I was also going to ask about this summer about um I noticed that you're not going to the Pan Am games I'm and I'm wondering was that a decision you made you just didn't want to have have two big meets this summer um, actually my coach and I were thinking of instead going to world cup again. Okay. And yeah. then the Pan Am games, just cause I mean, obviously money does play a factor. And so I would hope, even though it's long course this year, instead of short course, which feels a little rude, but it's fair. I understand <laughs> <why>. <laughs> um, just trying to hopefully maybe win some money just to help with finances and then also it just felt like uh like I fully Pan Am Games does seem like it would be really really fun to go to and I really hope the team that does go does really well there um but no it was just a decision my coach and I made together to try for a World Cup instead right so I that was something that I was gonna ask about later but probably makes sense to ask now and you're talking about the the financial aspect which has been a big story for a lot of swimmers that that we've been covering at Swim Swam, especially uh -huh. as from 2019 to 2021, the onset of ISL, and then maybe some swimmers getting getting used to that, and then that going away. And so, I know that you did ISL in in 2021, and and you you signed with the LA Current and had a really successful um, season. I think you won six out of eight 100 backstrokes and broke the Canadian record three times um, in in like I don't know what like four days or something um so maybe if we could just start by talking about the ISL and if that like so many others if you were like okay maybe I'll get to do this like in the fall for the next couple of years and it'll be a good racing opportunities because really high quality swimmers go to that and then also the financial aspect it's, it's a chance to make money um I'm wondering maybe just so I can actually ask a question instead of just keep rambling uh what like, were you excited to keep going with the ISL? And what was your reaction when they at least stopped for two years? Um, well, obviously, I would have loved to keep going. Because of, I, because of ISL, I was actually able to keep swimming. I was in a, like, it's really hard as an athlete to find a job when you can't actually work the morning shift or the evening shift because you have a workout that would be smack dab in the middle of both. Yeah. Um, so 
even I know a lot of people I've always said aren't so happy that maybe they haven't received all their funding but for me even just the initial fee or like um, payment was very beneficial and actually allowed me the chance to keep going and keep swimming um, so I'm always incredibly thankful for LA Current for taking a chance on me because I was really like a, the last minute pick there they didn't have to take me um, right. so it was really nice to have that chance and then to kind of get my feet under me and keep as you said keep rolling through all those times um so yeah I would have loved to have keep going especially because it's just it's such a fun atmosphere I've never been in a crowd where it's all like whole teams cheering everything's exciting and like the, the music the lights the cheers it was just an incredible experience um and so that would have been really nice to keep going because i know in america you guys have ncaa's and you guys experience that sort of cheering but we don't have anything like that in canada so just getting to enjoy that was really nice and fun and then i'm still friends with a lot of the people that i never even knew before like internationally so it was really great just experience to have and to if we get the chance to keep at it not only would I enjoy that for myself, but for future people that are maybe like me that don't have the finances to keep swimming, this gives them a chance when they don't have many. If, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah, it would be, I would love if ISL could keep going, like not just for the experience for us, but for future generations of swimmers getting to cut into the more professional spot side of our sport. Yeah. Right. And so, I don't know, without divulging any information, you're not allowed to divulge. Have you heard anything about a potential future for the ISL? Is that, are those discussions happening? I genuinely do not know. I would be probably one of the last people to find out here in Calgary. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that, no, yeah, that's, that, that makes sense. We, we haven't heard anything else for sure, but I don't know. I, I mean, like I'm, swim I'm, would definitely, I'd learn from swim swam probably. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're always trying to find out more information because I, yeah, like I think, the entire swimming community, everyone who is swimming, everyone who's watching, everyone who's covering it, we we definitely enjoyed the ISL. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, there were obviously problems and hiccups along the way, but but it was a really definitely exciting exciting moment in sport to see that kind of start growing. And yeah, obviously the the pandemic had something to do with it slowing down, maybe. But yeah, um, yeah. So that's an exciting future. And so I guess now you're talking about the World Cup as a bit of a replacement for it last year. Did you do all three or four stops? Was it last year? I no, it was four. just the three. Just Berlin, three? Toronto and Indianapolis. Yeah. Right. Okay. All three. Yeah. And how was that? Was that similar to the ISL? Like, I think the the format's a little bit different, of course, but was the the racing environment similar? Um, come see, come see. Um, like I said, it was really nice to have like a whole team cheering for you and supporting right. you. And then you go to World Cup and it's my coach in the stands yelling, go Ingrid. <laughs> right. Um, or in the Toronto stop, I will say we did have a lot of Canadian fans. So that was really exciting to see. Um, before I forget them, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a little bit different, I would say. Um, still fun, still a great racing experience and getting to race such high level people so early in the season is always very, very beneficial. So many times one after another. And I also really like getting to race so many times quickly because you can take your race, realize what you did wrong and try to immediately adapt it the, like two days later when you race again. So it's a really great learning experience for to understand where you are in your swimming and what you need to work on for the next month or so before, for example, then short course worlds. Yeah. Right. So during the World Cup, I know that you did the backstrokes. Did you experiment with any other like IMs, freestyles, butterflies? No, you don't want to see me do IM. I like to say <laughs> my favorite event is 50 breaststroke, but that's only because I am so terrible at breaststroke. <laughs> so no no um, pressure, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was just the backstrokes. Um, okay. I will occasionally do a 50 fly, but mainly just long course, just because I am very much so not good at an open turn. I've not figured that out to right. the level that everybody else has. <laughs> um, 
Cool. So World Cup. So you'll you'll get to do that again this year. I think it's all in Europe this year again, right? They're not doing the, the North America one. Yeah, no, I think it seems pretty exciting. I know one of the stops is in Athens and then Berlin. Oh, wow. And then I don't know where I, I can't remember where the third stop is, but I don't I've never raced in Athens. So I'm quite excited if I get the chance to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And so I guess similar to well, similar but different to ISL and the World Cup, you're going to Merritt Nostrum in is that start starts in may is that correct may and june yeah yes yep mid-may to the end of may yeah <laughs> and so that's something you got to do last year and you actually i believe won the the overall women's title uh, i forget how, how they said it but the the point aggregate that they use you yeah. you were you were number one in those rankings um and so i guess on on a racing level what was that experience like in terms of the the level of competition um, like I said, it's really great actually to get the chance to race such high level people one after another, so I can have a really quick learning experience. And then it was a month out from worlds for that. And so it was great to see, oh, I need to work a little bit more on my power or my start. Um, but no, any chance to race is a chance to learn. So just getting to race in Europe was quite nice. Although I could do without some of the outdoor pools the backstroke and how pale right. I am. <laughs> um, and was no. was Mare Nostrum also an opportunity to make money? I, I'm not. I'm not fully sure about what the score, the yes, prize money yeah. is. That was. I'm also incredibly thankful for whoever started the Mare Nostrum tour. It was. It is also an opportunity to make money there. It's quite odd. It's all in cash, so I don't know. What, I feel very odd carrying it all back in my suitcase on the way back but oh it was like physical cash yeah <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> but yeah because I won last year I also get to come back this year um through the Marinostrum tour and through my club so excited for that just to say hi to all the people I haven't seen since December again because you make friends awesome. along the way especially in the ready room no one yeah. wants to swim. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so that was kind of be my going to be my next question. The the racing aspect was good, and then um, it seems like I I always get the sense that the Mare Nostrum is an opportunity to race and get that experience before whatever the summer meet is. But it seems like people really have fun, and like you get to see people from like Sweden hanging out with people from Canada, hanging out with people from France. Like it seems like a really fun atmosphere at Mare Nostrum, the way that maybe an Olympics or a World Championships sometimes might not because it's so so intense and and the yeah. peak of of one's year um so yeah could, could, would, would you be able to speak to that like did you meet people and like have, have fun as, as well no I'm definitely I'm very introverted like at home but then when I get to race day especially right before the race I love to just have fun and talk around right. in the room and so I did make a lot of friends um like because I'd made some of the ISL and it was nice to see those guys and then I think I've made some more friends like from New Zealand, from Australia, from, um, but yeah, every, I think every international meet is a chance to make some new friends, um, and then say hi to old ones. But like you said, Mary Nostrum is definitely a lot less intense. You can just have a laugh before the race, after the race in the little, and especially in Monaco, the fun little dive tank, cool down pool. <laughs> so yeah, like you said, it's a lot less intense, a lot more relaxed, having fun atmosphere. And so it's, it's nice. And so it seems like uh, Swim Canada seemed to release some kind of roster, unofficial roster maybe of, of what Canadians are going to be going. And it seems like a pretty big group is, is going to be going. So is, is Team Canada going together for that? Or is it kind of people going individually? Um, That depends on who you are. Um, I know that they're taking a men's relay camp. And okay. then they also decided recently to take the girls freestyle relay camp. Okay. So those that are swimming in, I think it's, I want to say May Mayorka. I don't know. They're doing a quick little training camp beforehand and then they'll be coming to join the Marin Ostrom tour. So it'll be nice to see those guys again. But yeah, those guys will be with the team Canada group. I don't know okay. if the, I can't speak to the, if the high performance center of Ontario is joining that or is coming separately for just the three swim meets. Um, right. I can't believe for that but all the rest of us yes it's more of an individual home team club based type of thing awesome. yeah, it was just a freestyle relay um, okay 
for reference, sorry. <laughs> for several, yeah. yeah, no, that's that's good context. Um, and so my next question, or actually I was gonna ask this earlier, but um, I didn't, I kind of forgot. I was gonna ask about your current training and, and what, what club you are actually training with. I, I've, I've definitely written it down and reported on it, but I forget what, what like the actual name of your club. Well, I'm glad you asked because there was one time swim swam. You guys fixed it because I called it out. Um, I trained with the Cascade Swim Club. One time okay. you guys mentioned that I might be with the dinos and I was like, that is, <laughs> that's like uh, saying someone from, uh, what's some swim teams in America from like Florida. Does Florida have any enemies that they wouldn't, that, so I don't know. I honestly don't follow the NCAA as close as they probably should. That's Maybe right. like, like Georgia. I don't know. I was gonna say, how about in sport? Be saying like, if I was on the flame, Calgary Flames for hockey, and someone saying I was on the Edmonton Oilers, like it's just a, oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> the dinos <laughs> is is the dinos the team for for Calgary for the University of Calgary. For the for university, it. and then they also have an age group program. Um, okay. Similar to like what I'm technically training with is the Cascade age group program. So, but they have all ages from like six. And then I think we just got a new swimmer, Thomas, who's from Germany. He's coming to train with us. Uh, he's in his 30s. So, got quite the age span. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I guess that's, I, I think, I, just because a lot of the Canadian swimmers are at those centers. I'm wondering what the experience of of kind of still training with a club that you that you've been with like what's the training environment like Well I used to actually be in one of the centers in Vancouver and then right. I moved back for um what well, was the Olympic year at that time just cuz my relationship with my current coach Dave Johnson he just lets us all actually have fun and it's a fun relaxed environment and I feel like for myself training with these kids sorry if they're watching you guys are kids to me. Um, <laughs> training with folks that are like 14 to 18, still in their high school years. They don't, we don't take it, everything as seriously. Like you can have fun and work out and still do the work that's being asked. And I just think it's a much more enjoyable environment to just enjoy what we're doing. <laughs> um, right. And just not take ourselves so seriously. It really helps take some of the edge off. And then we can all just, like I said before, have a laugh if it's a really hard set, but still help each other and push through it. Um, but yeah, with Dave, he'll be the ones telling me jokes at the wall. And I'm like, Dave, I got to focus. <laughs> <As I'm> like, <laughs> <"Pushing off." laughs> I got to do the set that you wrote for me. <laughs> I'm like, I can't swim while I'm laughing that hard. Like, it's really hard when you just exhale right before you push off and he's expecting 50 meters underwater. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's, that's awesome that you can kind of keep that balance while you're still training at a really high level yeah. and, and performing at a high level. Um, so does Dave, I know that he has been around at a, at a high level, Dave Johnson for, for a while. Is, is he traveling with you to the international meets generally? Yes. Yes. I'm really lucky that he will be coming with me to American Ostrom and he did make the work team for worlds. So that does help. He's he and another coach, Greg Arkhurst from Camel are really good about helping me just relax because like I said I do get very anxious sometimes for races um right. so it's good at calming me down and helping me laugh before the big big events yeah awesome um so I guess maybe my next question will be just about the Canadian national team in general um I, I reported a lot on the Canadian team this year and it's definitely I feel like every year it's a pretty good mix of like faces we've been seeing for years and some newer swimmers. But this year that, that seemed like a really strong contrast of like people that, that I, I have known for a long time, just from like being a swimming fan. And then a lot of people who maybe a year ago I hadn't heard of and are kind of just like swimming their way onto the national team and also the, the junior worlds team and the Pan Am team, but specifically the, the world championships team that, that you're on. Um, it seems like a really interesting time in in swimming Canada's trajectory that that we've yeah. been tracking for a while. So, I'm wondering if you could just comment on like where you see yourself in that trajectory and like in that landscape of swimming Canada and as a whole. What what you how how would you characterize the team like the makeup of the team this year? No, that's a really good point. There was a lot of swimmers that it was really nice to see, like other swimmers 
making the team going faster and even making the FINA A and like how competitive some of the events were like the women's tuna I am that was insane <laughs> yeah. um uh but um no it's I think it's going to be really fun to have some newer folks on the team and get to experience it through their eyes a little bit and see how exciting and enjoyable it can be um to not only cheer for your team but to race at such a high level event with so many people watching in the stands it's i think i hope it'll be really fun for them yeah and hope that they can hope that we'll those that are more veteran on the team will be there to help calm them down if they need answer any questions just because i mean it is a new experience so I'm hopeful that some new blood will also help Canada maybe win some more medals. <laughs> yeah, medals are good. Um, <laughs> so I'm wondering, one, one kind of like a throwback question. I feel like we've kind of jumped around chronologically here, but I'm wondering if we could just go back to the moment um, when the Olympics were canceled. Obviously the pandemic started before that and then, um, or not canceled, postponed. I'm wondering in that moment in the the Tokyo Olympics when they were with when they were postponed at that moment were you like okay I have my sights set on trials which is in a few weeks from now and I want to make this Olympic team in 2020. And I'm wondering what that moment was like for you when when you realized that this goal that that might still be a thing is is going to be delayed by a year. What what was that that moment like? Um. Well, for me, it was. Canada actually announced first before it was po like the Olympics were postponed that they weren't going right. to be contingent. And so that was a little bit heartbreaking because I thought it was still going to be going on and they were just taking us out. Like I completely understood why it was very like logical choice, but like motions don't really play into logic sometimes. <laughs> um, so that was, a, I was disappointed. I was really hoping that we would be able to. So when they announced that they were actually postponing it, I was actually like, great, we actually have another year to work and for me to get stronger because I was only just after coming back from university, figuring out my stroke and my technique again and then getting stronger through that. So I actually didn't hate that we got another year to get some more training behind behind myself or behind us. Yeah. Right. And did you have any major like interruptions in your career as, as a result of the, or not in your career, in your training as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, like we were not allowed in the pool for quite a bit. So I was training on the VASA and at home over Zoom quite a lot, a lot too much yeah. dry land. <laughs> um, but then after that, we were very lucky here at what's now called MNP. We keep switching the name where I train. They did open up the pool for those of us that could potentially make the Olympic team. So that was really nice of them for us to have a chance to swim. And then there was over Christmas, we weren't allowed to train just because there was a potential COVID. Um, someone came to work out with COVID, so we all had to quarantine. Um, right. So that was a little disappointing to be back at home in the basement on the VASA and sweating. <laughs> um, but then coming back into it, going into trials, it was. And like I said, MMP actually gave us a chance to race once as a time trial before heading into trials. So incredibly thankful for the MMP Sports Center for allowing us to the chance to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I guess, yeah, we don't need to talk about COVID too much because it's no, well, it's not over, but now that that world championship with chips in 2023 can happen at its kind of full capacity. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering, do you, do you ever like, are you at a point where you're like looking back on, now two years ago and that that moment when you you didn't make the olympic team and and i mean obviously that would that would be a disappointing moment but since then you've had so many breakthrough moments it feels and like successes so do you find yourself looking back at 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 where you were two years ago and 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 using that or or are you still kind of just like moving forward moving forward i a lot of people say like oh i'm glad this happened to me because then i wouldn't be here today um I mean I feel like making the team would have been nice I, I'm just trying to just keep moving forward and just keep reaching for my goals um um it was something that was pretty like heartbreaking to be honest but if I'm I'm glad that it was something I didn't let stop me and I 
kept training and working towards my goals. I would say that I'm, I mean, it's always nice if your goals happen, but I'm glad that it, I didn't let it not happening stop me from continuing. I would say that. Right. Um, cool. And so, yeah, as we, as we've discussed in the podcast, you've had so many different meets and, and, and experiences over the last three years, maybe, or do any of them stand out in particular as like a moment when, I don't know, maybe I don't have to describe it or just does anything in your career um, in the last few years stick out in particular as like a positive, positive moment, a best moment, a peak? Um, similar to my just answer just now, um, breaking that first Canadian record at ISL does stand out because it was like a moment of just vindication for continuing to choosing to continue to swim. So I would right. definitely say that would stand as a bit of a breakout moment. It was just like a nice finally <laughs> type of thing. Um, it just, I don't have another word other than just vindication. A lot of people yeah. thought I should have stopped swimming long ago. So it was nice to just prove all those many people that have been cheering for me that they were right. And I'm so thankful for them and for everybody that has. And yeah, I would just say the first time I got that Canadian record at ISL was, was, was nice. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, I guess that that kind of positive note would be a good, a good place to, to end it. Um, and as we said, you have lots on your plate heading, heading forward, Mare Nostrum, Worlds, and then I don't know who, who knows, who knows what else after that. Um, but yeah, any, any last thoughts, any, any last messages to share for the pod? Um, I was told to say that for the Pan Am games, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Uh, for the, you just, oh my gosh, he's going to be so mad at him. Me. What's his name? You just did an interview with him. Oh, Javier. Javi. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Javi. Don't watch this. Um, <laughs> you would like to do be the flag bearer for the Pan Am Games? Okay. Play that. Will, yeah. oh, we're going to manifest. I think he, he said that on our pod, so we're, every every time yeah. we're just going to say it. Yeah, I'm just going to manifest that. Putting it out there for him. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for, for oh. spending time on the Swim Swim podcast today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. No. You've been listening to the Swim Swim Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.